Think of Judy Garland's Over the Rainbow. The Recording Industry Association named it the number one song of the 20th century. Since Judy Garland first sang it in The Wizard of Oz, the Oscar-winning classic has been identified with her and her alone. Until now. For the last year or so, radio stations in England have played another version of the song. This spring, the album hit number one on the British pop charts. The artist is an American singer who died in obscurity nearly five years ago. She performed at small clubs and sold tapes of her music from the trunk of her car. Her name is Eva Cassidy. She was painfully shy, not at all glamorous, and much to the frustration of record company executives, impossible to pigeonhole. Pop tunes, blues, jazz, gospel, she sang whatever moved her. In an era of brightly packaged stars, think Britney Spears, Eva Cassidy was the polar opposite. Indeed, she never knew fame. That is coming only now, years after she died in the prime of her life. And her version of Over the Rainbow? See if it doesn't give you goosebumps. For my colleague Dave Marish, Nightline's resident jazz and blues enthusiast, putting together the Eva Cassidy story has been a labor of love. <laughs> I see trees that are green, red roses too. I watch them bloom for me and you, and I think to myself, what a Eva Cassidy left this world in November 1996, leaving behind a small group of fans in the Washington, D.C. area and two locally produced CDs. Beyond those narrow boundaries, though, when the singer died at the age of 33, her name was all but unknown, her music all but unheard. Oh, what a Eva and I met in seventh grade. Um, we were seated next to each other, luckily. No place, Ever since I could remember her, she loved jazz and blues. Jazz, blues, folk, rock, and gospel were all major sources of Eva Cassidy's repertoire. But so were classic laments and ballads from American popular music. One song above all. Somewhere over the rainbow way. The Somewhere over the rainbow just was one of our favorites. When I say our, I mean her groupies that always followed her wherever she went. She would nail those notes. She sang it so beautifully. There were always tears in the eyes of the audience. So it was to be, almost two years after her death. In a country an ocean away from her home, that over the rainbow moved Eva Cassidy from obscurity to the spotlight. A friend of mine uh, brought the record to me in the office. Paul Walters is a producer for a popular morning show on the BBC's Radio 2. I thought, oh, fine, OK, put it in the pile. I'll get to it later. And he said, no, I'd like you to listen to it now. So I had to listen to it, and I was absolutely stunned. Suddenly, there was a song that 
and a voice that stood out a million miles above all the rest stopped me in my tracks. I thought, I've got to play this. We've got to have this in the programme. It's the wonderful Eva Cassidy and uh, old Paulie Waters gets a great deal of the credit for discovering her enormous talent. And Terry Wogan is Radio 2's morning star. He played Eva Cassidy's recording of Over the Rainbow unheard on Paul Walter's Say So. But he said, OK, fine, we'll, we'll have that next, and we put it on. And he was absolutely amazed as well, stunned. And at the end of the record, to, to our audience of very nearly 7 million people every day, he said, isn't that just the most amazing thing you've ever heard? The first time I heard Eva Cassidy was, um, like a lot of people in this country, I think, through the Terry Wogan show on Radio 2. Well, the best in pop and rock from the last Mark Hagen produces BBC the Television's the the weekly Pops music show, Leading Top of the Pops 2. So heard the record, loved it, got the record. I thought, this would be a fabulous person to, to show on television. Unfortunately, Hagen thought, there is no videotape of Eva. Until almost two years later, he found and broadcast this homemade video of Eva singing over the rainbow at Washington's Blues Alley. We put it on the program on the 13th of December, I think it was, in 2000. And as soon as the program came off air, the switchboard was jammed. And this went on and on and on. Six weeks later, I was still getting calls. I thought, well, Perhaps I should show it again. I wish upon a star. So I put it on top of the box two again. The same reaction again, but even more so. Um, and that's still going on today. This spring, Eva Cassidy's CD Songbird with Over the Rainbow on it was the number one selling popular album in the United Kingdom. For several weeks, Eva had as many as five CDs listed in the British Top 150 for pop albums an achievement of Beatles or Rolling Stones proportions. As her rediscovery has bounced back to the American side of the Atlantic, CD sales here have taken off. Songbird has passed 200,000, and Eva's total U.S. CD sales are close to half a million. She was afraid then what fame would do to her. She was really kind of afraid of it. And I have to kind of laugh, because this is the way I think Eva would have loved it. Everybody else does the talking for her. All she does is sing. Cooking with the big gas flame. Hey! Thank you, Mary. It's true. Eva was afraid to get on stage, and she knew she needed to improve her ability, her shyness, her assertiveness, her stage presence, and she knew she needed to do some solo gigs. People get ready. There's a train. Eva was soon singing regularly in small clubs, thinking about recording, which is what took her to the studio run by Chris Biondo. And even there, Eva was at first mic shy. She uh, wouldn't come in, and uh, she just kind of stood in the shadows, and I thought there was something wrong with her, that she wasn't, you know, a singer, just somebody who was coming by to, you know, try to sing. And uh, she went in and just blew me away right away. Um, everything she sang from the minute I turned on the mic to when she left was amazing. To play. Also left amazed when Chris played Eva's tape was Chuck Brown, a DC legend in go-go and soul music. I hear this beautiful, mellow voice coming out of this tape. It just took me right out on the very beginning. Soon, Chuck and Eva were collaborating, and Chuck says this young white girl was not only inspiring him, but teaching him to sing jazz. The 
We talked and uh, made arrangements to start uh, doing something. We picked a few tunes. Oh, she was very, very uh, stylistic in her own way and uh, very precise on her, her, her uh, tone and her melody. Very melodic, the way she strays away from the melody, comes back to it, and all of this just fascinated me, you know? Of course, I never tried to do none of that. Shy Eva loved singing with Chuck. She could hide behind his showmanship on stage and ride behind his reputation to bigger and better bookings, like Washington's venerated jazz club, Blues Alley. Let's give a big Blues Alley welcome to Miss Eva Cassidy. The club has been here almost 40 years, and uh, we've been blessed with hearing almost all the great names in jazz, the singers, over the years. A lot of the staff has been here a long time, so they're not easily swayed. Heaven, I'm in heaven. Uh, the first night, first song, when she started singing, I noticed the staff all stopping in their tracks and looking at the stage and looking at one another. And we both, all of us thought at that time, wow, this is something. When we're out together, dancing cheek to cheek. Oh, heaven. With Eva now on the pop charts in the UK and popping up in People and other major magazines and on network TV in the States, Ralph Camilli remembers the girl with no stage patter, no stage presence, who dressed like she was going for a hike. I'm sure. If she were alive and having this notoriety now, we'd be joking right here at this table about how she would be driving the execs crazy about, uh, move a little more, Eva. Why don't you wear this, Eva? I mean, she wasn't that way and wouldn't have been that way. And uh, I don't know that they would have known what to make of her. Blues among the fields of barley You can tell the sun in his jealous sky When we walk as I say, you listen to the music, you look at the pictures, you get the feeling of just, you know, lighter than air and more, more delicate than chiffon, uh, not the complete picture. Just the opposite. Uh, she was tough, very tough. Uh, tough in her mind and, and tough in her body. You know, she worked for years at a nursery and uh, was extraordinarily strong. Will you stay with me? Eva applied all that toughness and all that stubbornness when it came to selecting her song list, says her pianist, Lenny Williams. I know she had to emotionally connect with the lyrics to sing the song. That was a prerequisite. I mean, she had to like it musically, but, but the, a lot of times the message of the song, the lyrics, was the make or break thing. You know, if she didn't really connect with it, she wasn't going to do it. That Eva enjoyed and insisted on singing jazz and pop, folk, and gospel songs drove record companies crazy. This guy, I can't even remember the record company uh, he came from. Um, he came down and sat there and watched her sing and looked at her and said, uh, what do you want to do? And she looked at him and said, um, uh, pretty much anything. He goes, well, what do you want to do? Tell me the kind of, you know, the style you want to go for. And she goes, pretty much anything but that pop crap. But we never heard from him again. One record company guy who kept coming back was Bruce Lundvall, the head of the top jazz label, Blue Note. Uh, I got a call from a fellow. That, so he brought her to my office, but he didn't have anything to play, so she stood in the middle of the room and sang Amazing Grace. And I, it was just chilling. Amazing was, just, was the right oh word. Oh, my Lord. Uh, and I said, oh, my God, what, did, you know, what a voice, what an extraordinary voice, you know. And that was the beginning. Lundvall tried pairing Eva with a Philadelphia band, Pieces of a Dream, but the music didn't work. So he asked Eva, what are the songs that work for you? They were all over the place. There was a gospel piece, there was a country song, there was a standard, Over the Rainbow, etc. I said, well, the voice is just spectacular. I mean, but we're a jazz label. Had she been willing to make just a jazz record, we would have done it probably right away without question. But that wasn't her nature. Blue Note decided not to offer Eva Cassidy a contract. That I made a mistake. 
and a serious one because she was a great, great talent. Lundvall had little time to realize his error. In the spring of 1996, just months after her Blues Alley date had been turned into a CD, Eva started walking with a cane because of persistent pain in her hip. The cause was cancer. She was given just months to live. Bruce Lundvall heard the bad news and called. Her mom let me speak to her. And I asked her to forgive me for not signing her. And I couldn't hold it. I couldn't contain myself. It was one of the most uh, difficult moments I've ever had. And she said, no, no, it's OK. You know, we were together. Eva's friends threw a benefit for her at a club called The Bayou. Her parents, Barbara and Hugh, remember Eva rising to the occasion. And she saw all these people, and uh, you know they had come out to see her, and she was just totally amazed that they would all show up. You know, all of her good friends, and uh, so many people donated their services and their talents. And then the honoree moved to the microphone. Well, she made her way up on stage, had some help getting up onto a stool, picked up her guitar, looked out at the people in the audience. The love, it was all love. Of course, everybody's crying. She announced that she had just taken a huge dose of morphine so she could handle this. It was the last time she sang in public. And what did she sing? I see trees that are green. There she was performing and uh, singing, it's a wonderful world. And there, there wasn't a dry eye in this place. It was just really incredible. For me and you and I think to myself, what a wonderful world. It was more than the, the medicine that got her up there. I mean, she was very high on, on getting up there and, and, uh, and um, doing the tete-a-tete -tete with the audience and, and singing that song. But Six weeks later, she was dead. So many of Eva Cassidy's favorite songs, Over the Rainbow, Bridge Over Troubled Water, People Get Ready, were about how it isn't over when it's over, that death doesn't always get the last word. It turns out that wasn't just her songs, it was her story. wonderful world. I'm Dave Marish for Nightline in Washington.